Today's reflection from St. Peter's Wellsbourne is from our Lent book, The Living Cross. It's Sunday, the 7th of March. Made white as snow. Isaiah 1, 13 to 19. Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths and convocations. I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I'm weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. Who is the more religious of the two of you, you or your husband? The radio interviewer asked. I was taken aback, but answered, I think we both have a strong and committed faith, and that's one of the reasons I was so drawn to him in the start. As I reflected later, I realised that even on a BBC Sunday morning show, I was seen as religious, which is not a word I would normally use to describe myself. Committed Christian, yes, one who loves the Lord and seeks to follow him. But religious, that seems to make me either too holy to handle or as if I mindlessly follow empty rituals. Yet this is how so much of society sees Christians. We're religious, especially if we take part in what they would call organised religion. I was on the show talking about being a vicar's wife, so that doubly categorised me. They may believe we have signed up to a life of rules and regulations. Unfortunately, with these characterisations, they miss out on understanding the intimacy we Christians can feel with God because of our relationship with him. This relationship is what the Lord urges his people to return to in our reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord speaks through the prophet, telling the Israelites that he takes no pleasure in their offerings or incense, their assemblies and festivals. Rather, he is burdened by them. For the Israelites' hearts are not pure. Instead of pursuing a relationship with God in which they look inside and confess any wrongdoing that may be keeping them from wholehearted devotion to the Lord, they rely on the outward action of following the rules. Keeping rules can be easier than confessing one's secret sins. But the Lord sees the state of their hearts and speaks his word. He calls them to right living, which includes seeking justice and defending the weak. He wants them to argue their case before him so that he may turn their scarlet sins as white as snow. When they repent, he will restore them to a right relationship with him. They will eat the best from the land, which hints at the feasting that the Lord welcomes them to enjoy. How about us? We know that Jesus himself was the final sacrifice on the cross, so we aren't required to offer bulls or rams to the Lord, but we might think that we have to sacrifice offerings to the Lord in other ways in order to be close to him. Or we might hide behind rituals or regulations, 
imagining that this is safer than bearing our heart, fears and emotions to the Lord. Or we might not believe that we're really truly forgiven, thinking that we'll always be marked with scarlet sins. Yet Jesus' work on the cross frees us. His cross is living, for through it we can stand tall in our identity as God's beloved children, washed free and made as white as snow. And maybe as we share the love we receive from God, people in society will learn that we are Christians, not by our rituals, but our love. Our prayer. Father God, sometimes I hide behind rules, thinking that if I keep them, you will accept me. But you have already beckoned me to yourself, running to more towards me when I return home, helping me to deepen my relationship with you, that my good works will flow from a grateful heart. Wash me clean, Lord that I may no longer cling to any scarlet sins, but may know freedom and release. I ask for a fresh infilling of your spirit, that I would be marked by your love and able to extend it to those I meet. Amen.